When I started this keyboard journey a couple of years ago, the first one that I bought was the ZSA Plank EZ keyboard. And the reason I really liked the idea of that was I was going to use it as my desktop keyboard, and but it was small enough that I could take with me and use it with an iPad so I could have a kind of really lightweight, portable computing setup where I was using exactly the full same desktop experience with that keyboard uh, with the iPad. And obviously deciding to go with an ortholinear keyboard meant that I wasn't interested in using a laptop with a staggered keyboard at all anymore. So the idea of this kind of keyboard with an iPad was much more appealing to me than a laptop. And I was actually pretty happy with this idea of the plank. I really loved the keyboard and all of the amazing customization features from ZSA just really opened my eyes to this amazing world of custom keyboards. But then they sent me the Moonlander, which actually, you know, it was an amazing keyboard. It was very exciting to go into the split world and experiment with tenting and, and all of the rest of it. But it actually was quite a curveball to that original goal of mine to create a portable keyboard that I would use in a desktop environment as well. So actually what I ended up doing was just putting the same layout on the plank as the Moonlander and so I kind of took the plank with me uh, as my portable keyboard and kept the Moonlander in the desktop environment. And I think there are some compatibility issues with the older iPads, the Lightning ones, but with the USB-C iPads it did work fine. Of course after that I ended up progressing into all kinds of different split keyboards. If you're interested in following that DIY keyboard route that I took, uh, you'll eventually get to the point where you need to order and, and have fabricated your own PCBs. And PCB Way are the fabricator I use and they are sponsoring this video. So it's many thanks to them that these kind of videos can be made. I actually used them before they started sponsoring my videos and I've been really happy with the service they provide. They've got a range of different services from sort of very affordable prototype boards right the way through to these advanced boards that use incredible colour schemes like this transparent solder mask on uh, the after dark black core PCB which is an amazing thing but obviously has that cost associated with it. The thing that strikes me about their service is it's super fast. They will ship these things out to you really quickly and their shipping is fast as well. So do check them out when it comes to the point of choosing a PCB fabricator for your custom keyboard the comfort of a split keyboard in a desktop environment is is just so appealing but you do need to kind of set up a good permanent environment with the tenting and the angle and, and have it all exactly set up and keep it that way it's not really a very good idea uh, in terms of creating a portable keyboard you can't just quickly grab it and go split keyboards are actually a bit of a faff when you're away from that controlled desktop environment and when i use those wireless split DIY keyboards with the iPad, I started seeing some very strange connectivity issues with the iPad and it was bizarre because it was sort of things like when I switched apps on the iPad, it would disconnect the keyboard and I couldn't figure out why on earth something like that would, would have an effect on the connectivity of the keyboard. So I didn't really commit to a layout long enough to sort of convert it to a unibody design which might work better with the iPad. Um, so I just kind of left it all on the back burner. So all of that meant that I wasn't actually using the iPad as much as I'd have liked to. But recently with my 18 key layout, I'm kind of feeling that this is going to be a layout that I'm going to stick with for quite some time. So I thought I'd jump in and turn it into a unibody keyboard that would work really well as a portable board for use with the iPad. And the really nice thing about this is because I'm now using 18 keys in total on my whole keyboard, this unibody version can actually work with a single nice nano controller with no diodes or matrixes needed. And this is brilliant because I've kind of managed to get through this whole keyboard journey without having to learn about matrixes and diodes, which are needed when you want to create a keyboard using a nice nano controller that has more keys on it than the controller controller has pinouts. And of course the 36 key keyboard layout works with a split design with a controller on each half, again without the diodes. So my layout decisions have kind of lent themselves to making these kinds of keyboards a lot easier to build. PCBWay kindly donated these boards to me and they let me choose whatever I wanted, which was fantastic. So of course I went for the after dark color scheme, which is a transparent solder mask on a black board. So normally the board color itself is kind of a sort of yellowish. It doesn't really matter because you've got a colored solder mask over the top. Uh, but with this one, it's a black core board. So the board itself is black and with the transparent solder mask over the top, you can see all of your copper layer through that transparent solder mask. And the fun thing about that is of course you can put artwork in the copper layer and that shines through this transparent solder mask. So you can can create some very very cool looks. I've used my company logo here uh, which is quite an interesting design logo and looks great on the copper layer through the transparent solder mask and of course you can really go to town with the trace route design on the board as well because that is such a visual part of these kinds of boards. When you're designing a split keyboard you usually just use the same board and obviously it's turned over for your left and your right halves that means you can just have a single design and you haven't got to create two different design boards for left and right it just means you flip it over but what that normally means of course is the controller needs to be reversed on one side than the other. So I was actually using a reversible footprint which is where you solder the little jumpers and that allows you to put the controller 
facing the same way on both halves of essentially what is the same board. When I was designing this unibody version, I obviously don't need the reversible footprint, so I just changed it to the normal one, but I forgot to check which way round the footprint would work. So in this case, it would mean I'd have to flip my nice nano controller over, but I didn't want to desolder all the pins and do that. So I, I just actually stuck the nice nano controller on the underside of the board, which is pretty strange. It's obviously not level at all, but actually because I'm using it on a beanbag, it doesn't actually matter. It just sort of sits into the beanbag. It's not a massive problem but I wasn't intending for the controller to go on the underside of this board. I built this keyboard using my ErgoGen through to KiCad workflow that I've done other videos on. And ErgoGen made the process of building this unibody keyboard just as easy. And I'll go into more detail on the ErgoGen configuration for this kind of a board on my specific keyboard channel. So hop over and subscribe to that for that kind of more deep dive content on keyboards. And then when you bring it all into KiCad, you can just draw the trace routes all over the board and connect it all up. And then you export the Gerber file, upload it to PCBWay, and off you go. So I created a shield for ZMK and set up the config and put my same layout on this board and started testing it with the iPad again. And the impact of it being a unibody with the iPad on a beanbag was brilliant. It sort of immediately felt like it was a much easier keyboard to use in a portable environment. But I still had this bizarre connectivity issue. So I asked on the Discord group to see if anybody had any clues as to what was going on. Someone shared their config which had this line that was missing from mine and it changes the way the Bluetooth connection works. And it actually immediately solved this whole problem with connectivity and it's now absolutely bulletproof. You turn the keyboard on, it connects through Bluetooth to the iPad every time and it never loses it. It's just it's just perfect, just works like a normal Bluetooth keyboard should. So I'm absolutely thrilled about that. And really finally sort of feels like I've got this portable keyboard that uses the exact same layout, of course, as my desktop one, um, but it's tiny and light. It's worth mentioning another issue I had when I was actually experimenting using the split keyboard as a portable keyboard. I kept short circuiting them in my pockets, which was a pretty extraordinary thing. I couldn't figure out what was going on. You know, I turned them off. I couldn't see how any kind of shorting was going on. But there are sort of a bunch of pins that can still cause problems if you short them out because you can obviously connect the live output from the battery to those pins, even if the switch itself is turned off. Of course, if the board was in a proper case, this wouldn't happen. I haven't quite gone as far as actually building a 3D printed case for these kinds of keyboards yet, but for this portable one, that would be a really good idea. I think it would be nice to have this in a little plastic case. So with this tiny 18 key keyboard layout, I've obviously staggered the pinky key right down. And the impact of that is that my wrist angle and finger angle can be in line with the columns on that board. Because I found actually it's that pinky column stagger that really has the most impact on how much you can keep your wrist in alignment with the columns on the board. Even things like the Moonlander, which has a small pinky column stagger, it wasn't enough for me to actually align the columns on the board with my forearm angle. I still actually had to rotate the board so the columns were no longer actually directly in line with my forearm. I've done another video on this column to forearm angle and it sort of made the point that on a keyboard where you don't have an aggressive pinky stagger, you can actually get away with a fixed ortholinear board because you have to have your fingers going across the columns anyway. Otherwise you can't reach that pinky key if you're in alignment with it. And that was the issue I found with the Moonlander. I still had to rotate the board so that it was actually a similar angle to my forearms than it was when I was using the fixed plank. So I think it's the length of your little fingers and the stagger on that little finger key on the keyboard that really dictates what angle you need each half of the keyboard to be in relation to your forearms. So obviously the idea with this portable keyboard is the two halves are, are going to be close together because it's a fixed board and that means my forearms are creating that inverted V and because the column layout can be in line with my forearms due to that pinky key, the inverted V obviously is the shape of the layout that I've gone for here. I think getting your head around this relationship between the length of your little finger, the stagger on the pinky key, and that column to forearm angle is something that's taken me a while to kind of get my head around. And I didn't really sort of appreciate the subtlety and importance of, of that and when you're designing layouts. So I think I'll do another video on that at some stage. The main way I use this keyboard is on a beanbag. I, I'm always a big fan of these beanbags. I like the way you can just chuck them on your lap and stick the iPad on there and it's comfortable no matter kind of how you're sitting with it and it works just as nicely on a table as well. So with this keyboard, I'm just sort of sitting it on the front part of the beanbag in front of the iPad and it works really nicely. It's very comfortable. It doesn't really matter if I've got my feet up or, or down or on a table or whatever. It's a nice way of using an iPad with a full desktop grade keyboard. I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. So watch this video next to kickstart your progress on building your own custom DIY keyboards. Here are some comments to let you know it'll be worth your while. And don't forget, you can subscribe to my keyboard specific channel as well for more in-depth technical nerdy stuff that I'm going to put on this channel. And I'll see you there.